Hello, my name is Arun Vimori with the DHS Science and Technology Directorate. I'm joined by my colleague, John Howard. Uh, thank you for joining us today for the, on the first webinar about the 2020 Privacy Technology Demonstration. So before we talk about the Privacy Technology Demonstration, uh, I wanted to tell you a little bit about the Biometric and Identity Technology Center. Uh, this is a group of folks here at Department of Homeland Security's Science and Technology Directorate, and we focus on driving biometric and identity technology innovation. Uh, through advanced research, development, test, and evaluation. Our goal is to facilitate and accelerate understanding of the capabilities and limitations of biometrics and identity technologies, and wherever possible, to uh, drive efficiencies by helping to support cross-cutting capabilities so we can avoid uh, technology silos or solutions that may work for one component but could easily be, and, and facilitate adoption for others if appropriate. Uh, we serve as subject matter expertise within the department and across the DHS stakeholder community about the capabilities and limitations of these technologies. And some of the things that we do are to work closely with industry to provide feedback on how technologies work and to work with industry and academia to drive future in innovation and technology improvements over time. So the privacy and technology demonstration is something that's new. Uh, we are doing this to engage industry to develop technologies that address public concerns that things like persistent video surveillance technologies could be used or misused for persistent face recognition surveillance capabilities. The goal here is to help balance these concerns by enabling new technologies to be created, which will allow organizations that are responsible for public safety to continue to use these technologies to protect the homeland while guarding against potential technology misuse. So DHS is interested in understanding the product landscape of these technologies and uh, basically making sure we have an understanding of what exists, what's available, how mature is it, and how well does it work so that we can make sure that the technologies exist to help provide these additional capabilities for homeland security but also protect the privacy of individuals who may incidentally appear in these videos. So protecting your privacy or privacy enhancing technologies. Um, we are looking at identity obfuscation technologies that are designed to protect the user's identity and help maintain that these capabilities are available for Homeland Security uses. Uh, so examples could be things like traffic cameras or cameras that are used for public safety, uh, dash cameras or cameras in vehicles, uh, body-worn cameras. Things where we are uh, looking for other, uh, other factors primarily and where identity is secondary or not even required. Uh, with video obfuscation technologies, the goal is to prevent identities from being recognized from the videos by either humans or machines. So some of the things that could be done are blurring or distorting, distorting videos or actually just blacking out areas where the faces appear, uh, replacing faces with other images or other faces, or using other masking techniques. Uh, just as an example of a real world of what we're looking for is, uh, a nice example is uh, Google Maps Street View. Basically, when photos are posted online as part of Google Maps, uh, they go through the steps of making sure the faces, license, places, license plates, or other uh, PII, or personally identifiable information, are blurred in the images. The goal there is to help maintain the privacy of individuals, but still allowing users to see real-world images. Essentially, this is what we're looking for, but in real time from a variety of different technology capabilities. So with what we plan to do with the privacy technology demonstration is to look for full or partial capabilities for systems to obfuscate videos in real time. Uh, we are looking for systems that can collect or process live images or stored photos in, in a couple of different ways. So one of the things we're looking for are situations where the cameras themselves perhaps have uh, advanced uh, processing capabilities and can detect faces and obscure them before the PII is ever exposed. Or uh, probably another circumstance is a software that's capable of processing live video in real time and obscuring faces uh, so that uh, uh, if it's used by other parties, the faces cannot be re-identified or people cannot be uh, identified in the videos at all. So what the privacy technology demonstration is doing is it's a new type of, it's a way for us to evaluate new technologies. Our goal is to survey the current state of technology to understand what might be 
commercially available or near commercially available, uh, the relative maturity of these technologies, to understand the performance of these technologies with regard to actually preventing re-identification. Uh, some of the things we want to try to, uh, things that we want to do in addition to learning about the availability of these technologies is provide feedback to de technology developers, uh, allow them to demonstrate their capabilities to a variety of government or other public or private sector stakeholders, uh, and then work with s and to iteratively evolve these technologies so that they become more robust and more capable over time. Right now, our, our goal is to assess these technologies and provide feedback to specific participants that apply to participate in the event. However, we're not planning to publish these, these results publicly because we realize this may be a, a nascent market. Uh, this is something we, we're willing to revisit in the future, but right now we want to, again, encourage innovation, encourage people to try this problem, but uh, not publicly shame companies if they do poorly. So just like we do with the Biometric Rally, for, for those of you that are familiar with DHS's Biometrics Rally, we do plan to alias results so that uh, uh, companies have the chance to innovate, but also do not have to worry about their brand being diminished if they do poorly. So what we plan to do is we will uh, open up applications where companies or researchers or others who are developing these types of technologies can submit them and have them be evaluated by the government. Uh, the application will be roughly about five pages long. There is no formal format. We just ask that you cover this in the form of a white paper uh, based on your template, but that you, incur, you, you include specific information. Uh, we're looking for uh, a high level information about your company or organization, uh, you know, what, you know, some high level information about what you've been doing and working on, uh, information about where, uh, you know, basically uh, where you guys are located, what you're working on, uh, business points of contact, things like that. We're also looking for information about the systems. We're trying to understand if you are working on camera systems with edge processing or AI uh, accelerators, uh, if you're doing this primarily in software, uh, what the goal of your system is. Sometimes we've heard about systems that purely obfuscate or blur faces. Other things do more sophisticated things, including uh, maybe obfuscating license plates or removing identifying features from faces but leaving the faces intact or applying style GAN. So there's any number of different technologies that we see being applied to these things. And we would like more information about what your particular technology does. We'd also like to get a better understanding of whether or not your technology works in real time or perhaps post hoc on stored images. Uh, the application deadline is uh, uh, April 30th. So we will be accepting these applications. For more information, please visit mdtf.org for additional information, as well as to get copies of this PowerPoint. Um, after the, the presentation today. One of the other things we're trying to understand with these technologies is because this is a, um, a, a little bit more of a, a less developed market, try to get a better understanding of the maturity and the complexity of these technologies, uh, how long you've been working on them, how far along are they, or how mature you think they are, uh, as well as an understanding of what kind of inputs or outputs your system requires. So, for example, you know, different video formats, different, you know, video quality, um, other types of things if you're, if you're primarily working in software, as well as what the requirements are if you have a hardware-based solution. Uh, in addition to the white paper, we're also requesting a video uh, that might be up to two minutes long, demonstrating your capability in use so that we have a sense of what the uh, system does and how well it works and the, the level of maturity of it. So what to expect? Uh, any hardware or software that you plan to build um, that, that require actual uh, physical implementation um, will need to be sent to our s and MDTF for evaluation. Uh, software providers will, uh, will also be asked to provide their software in advance of the testing as well. Right now, we are currently planning to run this evaluation in the fall, so roughly around the September, October timeframe. So just to kind of re reiterate, uh, there's a couple of things that we will be doing here. We'll open up applications to participate, uh, instructions on the specific information that needs to be included in the white paper uh, will be posted on mdtf.org. Uh, we're asking that applications be submitted by April 30th, 2020. Uh, in addition to the webinar we're hosting today, you can also send questions to people screening at hq.dhs.gov. Uh, we will also be hosting uh, a, a technical webinar 
on April 7th to provide additional information or answer any additional questions you may have about what kind of technologies we're looking for or uh, information to include in your application. Uh, once we receive these applications, depending on how many we receive, we may have to limit the number of systems we can actually test. Uh, based on the applicationers and the application review process, we plan to send out notifications of conditional acceptance by May 22nd, and we will hold another webinar afterwards to help explain in more detail what things are required in order to uh, go from conditional acceptance to full acceptance of the technology uh, for evaluation. So again, we know that this was uh, quick and short. I'm sure there are plenty of questions. Um, if you have questions, please, we'll take them right now. Uh, you can also email questions to peoplescreening at hq.dhs.gov, or as well as look for webinar materials at mdtf.org slash demo2020. Uh, maybe while we're waiting, just a, a minor point of clarification. Um, so Arun mentioned the white paper submission is due April 30th. Um, we're having this webinar today. People screening is open for questions afterwards. The webinar on the 7th is uh, focused around the rally event. Um, so we could obviously take some questions maybe at that time about this one, but we weren't planning on having an additional follow-up technical webinar uh, specifically for the privacy demonstration. Yeah, to be to be honest with you, part of us, we're not entirely sure how many applications we'll receive. So if there are, um, if there are, are no applications, we may not have the privacy technology demonstration. Um, if there are some, uh, we will see what additional information we need to provide, uh, either in the form of an FAQ or perhaps a webinar or something else. But we realize that this is something that's new, it's different, uh, standards don't largely exist for these types of technologies. There are no set industry you know, performance measures for how these technologies are evaluated. So again, a largely a lot of the things here is to figure out, are people working on this problem? How mature are the solutions? Are any of them commercially available? And then how well do they work? Um, now I'll start going through the questions we're receiving. Uh, might the presentation be recorded for playback? Uh, so yes. Uh, the, the slides that we just went through very quickly, sorry, I went through very quickly, um, will actually be posted at mdtf.org. Uh, you should be able to download them in about an hour. Uh, these slides will be available, so uh, you, you can go ahead and take a look at them there. Uh, the webinar, this video recording, will this, this uh, session actually will be recorded. It will be uh, uh, posted online as well. Our goal is to get it up there in about two to three weeks. We have to do certain things like insert closed captioning, so that will take some additional time. Uh, and then also, if you have any questions, again, please reach out to peoplescreening at hq.dhs.gov. Uh, so next question, when faces are obfuscated, is there a requirement for face identification in the background? No. Uh, all we are asking for are all faces that are up here in the video that they are uh, obfuscated. There's no need for identification in the background. If you think of biometric recognition, this is honestly the other side of the coin. This is about using video for public safety purposes where we don't necessarily need or want to or want to guard against the potential uh, use of facial recognition in these videos. Right, so we're not asking people that are responding to the privacy technology demonstration to then also provide the ability to do identifications. Uh, one thing we may look at after we've run your technology on either live videos or stored videos is the uh, capability of our systems to actually do the identifications, right? How effective was a particular technology at doing that identity obfuscation that Arun talked about? Will the evaluation be done using uh, video files, live video streams, or both? Um, so it depends on the, solu on, on the capabilities that are submitted. Um, if you are submitting an algorithm, we may look at both perhaps live captured video, but also recorded video. If you are submitting a camera system with some sort of edge processing capability, we will look at doing this with live video. Can you confirm that this is a completely standalone demo, that no APIs or other integrations are part of the demo? Actually, go ahead. Yeah, so this is a little bit different from evaluations that we've run in the past where we make people conform to certain APIs. We recognize that this is a really uh, nascent field right now, and there, we don't want to limit the solution space that people um, are thinking about implementing or already have implemented. 
So um, there are no APIs. We're not trying to fit you into any sort of um, restrictive categories or anything like that. Uh, we think the two classes of technology solutions that are out there are this sort of at the edge camera processing and more standalone software. If you have either one of those systems or something that we maybe we haven't thought about, um, you know, submit the white paper and then we're gonna bring those systems into the MDTF. Uh, that was one of the slides that Rune read through. Uh, and install them, get them working, uh, which is a little bit different model for those that are familiar with the rally where you actually come install your systems. Please expand on the AI ML capabilities for analytic, analytic requirements. Thank you. So I'm not sure I understand your question completely. Um, if you are planning to do some sort of AI ML you know, training, uh, we would ask that you provide us your trained model for, for, for uh, execution. Um, we, we do not plan to do any um, AI ML training during the tech demo itself. It's really about evaluating capabilities you have previously built or trained and then uh, executing it in our environment to help verify that faces are obscured and that uh, re-identification is not possible of any faces that appear in video. If I misunderstood your question, did you read that a different way, John? Yeah, maybe whoever asked that question can just follow up. I didn't quite understand that one either. Okay. So next question, where do you anticipate this type of technology being applied? Um, we work with a variety of different stakeholders. Uh, we sometimes talk to uh, different entities, both uh, state local governments as well as private sector entities, where they have a legitimate interest in making sure that video cameras are still used for public safety or for liability purposes. Uh, maybe it's even slip and falls or to provide security around uh, um, you know, facilities to make sure somebody isn't lurking, so they want to make sure that people, their employees, and their, their customers are safe, but at the same time not be accused that they are using facial recognition to monitor the, or track the whereabouts of their customers or employees. Uh, this could also be applied for uh, cameras that are used in public safety. There's a lot of video cameras that are in public spaces that are there for primarily for non-identification purposes to make sure that there's a normal flow of traffic of people through spaces but they do not want to recognize individuals in those spaces, or they do not want people to fear that they are being monitored or tracked using facial recognition in those spaces. Yeah, I think just you know broadly, there's a lot of information <clears throat> content in videos, and identity is only one uh, small piece of that. So any place where uh, those other pieces of information might be useful in absence of identity information is a good application for these kinds of technologies. All right, next question. Will there be a preference granted for live demos as opposed to video demos? I'm not entirely sure what that means. I, could, I guess I could interpret that two different ways. Um, with the application, the five pace application that we're asking you to submit, again, there's no set format. We're just asking you to cover the important material within the five page limit. Um, you include a two minute video of what your system does. Um, perhaps you can show a before and after video of what the video of what a, a video stream would look like before applying your software or after applying your software. Um, the other one I'm the other way I could interpret this is whether or not this is applying um, this software to live video that's being collected actually from a public environment. Right. Um, honestly, for the five minute or the two minute video that we're asking you to submit. Uh, we, we just want to get a better understanding of how mature your capability is and make sure that it's something that it's more than just a five page white paper, that there's actually uh, an executable piece of software behind it that's capable of doing these obfuscations. Yeah, maybe this meant also um, is there a preference for technology that works on live video feeds as opposed to stored video feeds? And I, I think the answer to that there is there is not. Um, either one is an acceptable solution to this problem. Yes, we, we think that there's both a need for both. Um, there, for people, for entities that are planning to acquire new systems, they may be interested in the camera-based solutions because then the PII never is exposed. However, there are many um, entities that already have camera systems in place and the software-based solution might allow them to use their existing infrastructure and do this uh, type of modification after the fact. How will submissions be measured? Uh, so we will receive your applications and your videos uh, they will be reviewed by uh, a panel of government SMEs who are working in the space of biometrics, identity, and, and public safety and security who will help to prioritize which projects are evaluated. Uh, 
this is primarily based on uh, honestly limited resources. We just don't have the bandwidth or the, the resources necessarily to evaluate all technologies. So this gives us the ability to prioritize which ones we, we will be able to evaluate within the, the available resources. If we have strong analytical capabilities that haven't necessarily been applied to this application, but we're confident we can provide you a good solution, should we still apply? Or are you only looking for already established solutions? Uh, that's a really good question. To be honest with you, um, we're not sure how many established commercial or, or mature solutions exist. If this is something you are seriously interested in working on um, and you have the time to prepare the application and the video, uh, I would say go ahead and do it. Um, I, I think we, it's fair to say that we will prioritize more mature capabilities and solutions if they exist, but uh, we're not sure those capabilities actually exist. So if they don't, there's really no harm in, in having a less mature technology and we're happy to work with you to help hopefully iterate on it over time and make sure it becomes more robust and, and a stronger capability in general. Yeah, I would, I would add, take the opportunity, one of the items listed in the detailed application package slide was a, an opportunity to sort of introduce your company and your capabilities, um, take advantage of that and really let us know the things you've worked on in the past. It might not be this exact uh, problem space, but uh, there are a lot of very similar things out there. By obfuscation, did you want to blur faces or completely block them out uh, with, say, black boxes? Blurring allows for skin color to still be determined, but obviously seeing other parts of the person's skin would also. Um, so I think the major point here is we want to make sure that whatever the resulting video looks like, that uh, it inhibits potential re-identification using modern uh, contem uh, uh, cutting edge facial recognition technologies. Um, some obfuscation methods are probably stronger than others. I think we would defer to you as to which one you think is appropriate based on your solution, based on your, your, uh, your software about which one would be applied. But the goal truly is to make sure that we still have an understanding of what's happening in the scene, but not be able to re-identify someone based on their face. Yeah, I think to, to add on to that, so blurring is an acceptable solution. There's a lot of different kinds of blurring. Um, what we're really looking for is truly just that identity information, that individual identity information. So if things like, I think the, whoever asked the question mentioned skin tone, if that's still visible, that's not identity information to us, right? That's other sort of meta information. Um, so that would be fine. We provide a component of the larger solution. Can we partner with others on this call to build multi-party offering. Sure, we're, we're very open to anybody working together on different parts of this problem. Um, uh, if there are, uh, you know, if there's a team approach, I, I don't think we're opposed to that. We do want to understand what the, who's a part of the team and what they're individually contributing to the overall capability that we will evaluate. What will be the storage content management specifications for the video streams? Most likely varied per implementation or application. Uh, great question. Uh, we recognize that formats will vary, and this is one of the reasons, one of the things we ask for in the application. John, do you have anything you want to add? Yeah, to I, I think please describe um, the capabilities of your system if it's operating on sort of stored video. What kinds of formats can it operate on? Uh, how do we actually provide those videos to your technology? Is it is there a GUI? Is it something on the command line, uh, et cetera? Um, we have storage and content management, but they're just very rudimentary, sort of at the operating system level. Um, I think I'm interpreting that question correctly, but if not, feel free to follow up. The other thing I would add is, I think we, we do have a strong interest in making sure that the, the solutions work on um, non-proprietary formats wherever possible, um, so that we have the ability to use different video formats that are Oh, that are, that are, that are um, non-proprietary and feed those into your, your software. That being said, if your software only works on a specific format, we definitely need to know that as part of your application. Great. Uh, no interest in identifying or alerting to a FBI most wanted person or Amber alert missing person that comes into view while obscuring all other people. Uh, that might be a, a, a capability that's interesting at, at a future state for a future evaluation. Right now, we want to first test how well you can obscure faces of all people that might appear in the screen. So uh, 
That secondary task about recognizing or doing alert is what I would say is more of a facial recognition task. And we have a good sense of how those capabilities work. We're really trying to focus right now on, at this point on reliably detecting and obscuring faces um, um, that appear in the video. Yeah, I think maybe to add on to that. So in order to, to do uh, that <clears throat> use case where you're you know, really searching for everybody that's in a video feed, you have to take pictures of those people and search them. And from a privacy perspective, um, that's already sort of committing the original sin of taking a face image, taking that PII off the video and searching it against, you know, in this case, a watch list. Um, we're looking for technologies that, that actually don't do that, that stop short of that, um, that capability. Well, you want this to be cloud-based, Azure or AWS or others. Actually, our preference is that if you are working on this, is that you provide us with uh, a capability that can work on-prem. Right, we're going to need to get these systems running on MDTF uh, systems. So uh, if it only works in, in a cloud environment, that's probably not going to work for us. Uh, would weapons detection enhancement uh, enhance the application like license plates? Uh, again, this is a, a future, this is something we are interested in perhaps in the future. Uh, for this particular purpose, we're really looking at how well do you detect and obfuscate faces reliably. I think kind of one thing to reiterate there is, as you can imagine with video, there are many frames per second. If any one frame is dropped, that person might be identifiable. We're trying to make sure that that's just a very robust capability so that all frames, including those individuals, are truly obfuscated or masked so that they are not re-identifiable. Uh, is there interest in other types of objects? Yes, absolutely but that's not the primary goal of this particular test. Yeah, we're gonna evaluate uh, these systems on data holdings from the Maryland Test Facility. And um, you know, thankfully we actually don't have a lot of videos of people with weapons and, and license plates. We have a lot of videos of, of people and we know who are in those videos, but uh, those other sort of use cases, we just don't have data holdings to evaluate them. Yeah, it's probably worthwhile talking a little bit about our data holdings. So where we will evaluate these technologies is actually, uh, we have a closed environment where we can bring in volunteers who are consenting to let us collect video of them. Uh, and so we know who, we have ground truth on who will be in the video uh, and perhaps where they will be in the video stream so that we can go back and say, okay, are we actually able to recognize these individuals um, that are consenting to allow us to do this? But at the same time, we're, we're not looking for obfuscating everything or, or, or detecting everything. Um, again, we, we know that some of these capabilities are work, you know, uh, exist and they have different uh, um, um, levels of performance. We're specifically asking folks to focus on the obfuscation of faces. Next question, do you care how fast the solutions work? Um, what I'm saying is, in air quotes here, real time, uh, we do not want, basically the intent here is ultimately when these technologies get deployed, if they're integrated into a camera, uh, it should basically be, we, we should, the intent is to have little to no lag if they're implemented into software for them to be able to process video in close to real time. So again, there's minimal lag before displaying this or, or sending it off to a, another viewer of the video. Yeah, I would uh, echo what Arun said and also include uh, stability over time. It's one thing if it's, uh, you know, it's a camera system and it's outputting video at like a second delay or something like that. But if that delay increases over time, uh, that could be kind of problematic for the way we're planning on running these. Are you concerned with, N, uh, with next generation 911 standards applying? Uh, they don't have to. Uh, if they do, please include it in your application. Tell us what your system does or does not, uh, what standards do or do not apply to your solution. Um, right now, we're just looking at this specific basic functionality. If you, do, uh, if you do follow other, if there are other standards that apply to your system or other capabilities that your systems have, please include them. Um, they will be of interest to some of our, our stakeholders. First net application, same thing. If they apply, please include it but it isn't a prerequisite to participate. Is your plan to install or run so, uh, our software or our solution on MD MDTF computers, or should we plan on supplying the requisite hardware, i.e. workstations? Uh, 
Right, so if your solution is purely software-based, we will run it on MBTF computers. If your solution has a hardware component, like a camera, uh, you'll need to provide that, um, I think is the short answer to that question. Some of us here were interested in a demonstration of biometric privacy, i.e. encrypted or obfuscated biometrics. Is DHS still interested in these capabilities? Uh, yes, that, that is what we are trying to do here. We are. Let me, some of us were interested in demonstration of biometric privacy. Uh, I think that's what we're, we're talking about. We're asking for solicitations for our demonstrations of preserving privacy from biometric, specifically in this case, face recognition technologies. If I read that question, I mean, the way I kind of read that question is maybe they mean it in terms of um, encryption of the biometric information itself or ways to you know, enhance the privacy of biometric information. Uh, so, so I would say what we're looking at actually trying to do is, the, the, the concern again is that um, cameras that are used for public safety are often um, persistent, and that those things could be used potentially or misused for facial recognition. For, you know, so, so there are some stakeholders who, do, who want to guard against that perception. So they would like to obfuscate all faces in video. So that, that is the goal. That, that I think is the, is the objective we're trying to get to. Yeah, so, so if the question is about, so then the next follow-up was, I think Mike is talking about template encryption. Uh, that's not what we're trying to do here. We're, we're focusing on, at this point in time, on this privacy technology demonstration, purely on blurring faces in video, or obfuscating, uh, preventing faces from being re-identified in video. Uh, the next question is, uh, can we spec the computer needed to run the solutions? If not, what is the base MBTF computer configuration likely to be? Um, so I would include in your, this sounds like this is for a software-only solution, I would include in your application uh, the specs that you guys use in your lab for you know, things like CPU, RAM, if it needs a GPU, et cetera. Um, fortunate to have very nice computing uh, power at the MBTF, so uh, we can work with you to make sure that um, or meeting those those needs. Yeah, I, I think the other point here too is we know that um, since this does since this seems to be more of a um, uh, of an emerging space or emerging capabilities that the requirements for different systems may be different. So we, we, we do plan to be have some flexibility there to work with you on what is needed to run your solutions. Uh, next question: Do you want us to include remote video access that provide call managers real-time incident streaming without I, with identification obscured? I think if you have that capability, it's useful to include it in your application. At this point in time, we are we are solely looking at how robust your capability is to detect and obscure faces in the video. Um, that being said, for the commercial capabilities, uh, if you have these capabilities that are, are worthwhile to share with some of our public safety colleagues, we are happy, you know, I, I would say include it so that they see that and they're uh, aware of them as well. Well, again, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, we appreciate your interest in this activity. Uh, this is something that's new to us. Um, we, we call this a private a technology demonstration versus one of our biometric rallies because we realize this is a little bit different. Uh, we're, we're trying to understand uh, the current capabilities or if there are current capabilities that are strong in this area, how robust they are, um, and, and honestly start to develop a repeatable process of assessing these technologies and measuring them and coming up with standards for how we do that. Um, if you have any questions, please reach out to peoplescreening at hq.dhs.gov. Again, these slides will be posted in probably about 30 minutes on the website mdtf.org, and, uh, and and you know please keep in touch and let us know if you're part you're interested in participating in the event or have any additional questions you would like to know the answer to before uh, applying. Um, with that, thanks again. Um, hopefully, we'll have the video posted in about two weeks. Mm -hmm. We'll let you know about that, and we'll send out a, a notification when the videos are posted. And with that, uh, thank you, and have a great day. Thanks, everyone.